Good evening, everyone. So I work for you know this uh, division of Bits Pilani known as uh, Work Integrated Learning Programs Division. Quite a mouthful. We call it WILP. Uh, <coughs> I think somebody said that, you know, when you want a new idea, read an old book. And, uh, you know, that's what I think uh, many of the models of Bits Pilani uh, today are being looked at. Uh, most of, many of these models are actually very old. I think we have benefited a lot. Uh, but of recently, I'm seeing huge amount of renewed interest by institutions, by the government, wanting to look at what precisely is good in these models, which is making this whole industry engagement happen uh, far more effectively. In fact, within BITS, uh, uh, we have, in a way, moved from saying that we need industry engagement. I think the term which is very common nowadays uh, within the institutions, can we move towards extreme industry engagement? So that's, that's what uh, is the thinking and the philosophy within the institution when it comes to you know, thinking about industry collaboration. Uh, the division I work for, uh, literally lives with the industry. Uh, you would be surprised when I'm not an academic. Uh, I come from the industry and been working for past one decade in a senior leadership role within the university. So the one idea itself, I think, uh, which should be there is, can we have you know former industry people working inside the, inside the university itself? Uh, I think there, there was a mention about uh, professor of practice. Great idea. But can we really scale many, many similar ideas uh, internally? One, of course, it comes from the regulator as an idea. But then can, can universities themselves think of roles where the industry could be part and parcel of, parcel of that system itself? And I'm not the only one within Bits Pilani coming with an industry background. So there's a huge proliferation, uh, you know, which we have done of industry people within the university that's working for us. Uh, the reason I was there was because uh, while work integrated learning programs is an old division, uh, purpose was can we meet continuing education needs of working professionals? So that's again something uh, has been there and recognized as a need for a quite some time. But for the past seven to eight years, the intensity of this need has multiplied because of rate of change, which we are seeing in the industry, in the economy, and the need for people to catch up with how things are changing, intensity of that need has propelled us really forward. But we also realized, you know, when we were, when we were looking at ourselves seven to eight, eight years back and reflecting, we saw that if we have to meet these kind of needs, we have to structure ourselves very, very differently. So a lot of time that I spend, don't envy me, okay? A lot of time that I spend today sitting in rooms with practitioners and professors, you know, trying to negotiate what should be taught and how, how it should be taught. So, the, you know, that whole process, uh, I said, sometimes I'm a referee, sometimes I'm a moderator, okay, but the idea is how can we get both the sides to talk to the same language? And unless those conversations are happening regularly, uh, I remember when we initiated those things, I think the communication gaps were huge. They were talking in different languages, different lingo. But the fact that we kind of perpetuated it, we pushed it, uh, now we are in a situation you know, where when we get inside a room, sometimes practitioners are surprised uh, with the way the faculty members, the academicians, actually understand what their pain points are. And it just breaks down okay, the, the gaps which sometimes get artificially created. So this whole appreciation of what the industry needs and getting the industry to also appreciate what uh, you know the academia needs happens when you know when there is a consistent effort of creating those kind of interactions. The programs that we do, uh, we recognize since we work with working professionals, we know that when people are studying on campus, uh, the education has to be far more broad based. But the moment you you know get inside an organization, get inside, inside an industry, you meet people. The sponsors want something which should meet their business needs, should meet their business objectives. Even the learners, these are not the same learners who are there with you on campus. They've already chosen a sector. Many of them already chosen the career path that they want. That means the way to curriculum design has to be far more sector specific, have to be far more career job specific or a career path specific than what, what is done on campus. 
Now, what I've seen here is that while it might look that when we do WILP, we meet the needs of the industry, but when the professors go and create a curriculum for working professionals, there is so much of feedback which comes back. So when you go, let's say, to a large auto company, uh, what are auto companies doing? They're saying in the next 10 years, EVs would grow like anything. That means electric vehicles would be big time moving in. That means normal mechanical engineers, okay, are not today equipped with, you know, moving into a space of electric vehicles. Now, when the faculty goes and meet the auto industry and understand what they want to do for their own employees, the same input goes back today to the curriculum, you know, of the on-campus student itself. So the fact that we do continuing education has a direct, indirect impact on what the faculty needs to do on these. So I would say promote and invest in creating a continuing education system, even if it is uh, today not there, I think one should set it up. If it is there but not prime, I think it's time for universities to invest in it because the benefits are not just in terms of creating impact for working professionals, the benefits are hugely there for on-campus students. Because in case of BITS, a large part of education delivery which happens at the industry is done by the same faculty. So imagine a faculty which uh, on a weekend goes uh, you know, to an auto industry or to IT industry or to mining industry, conducts a class for mid-career professionals, and then during weekdays come back to a classroom you know, of uh, young people. You can imagine the amount of you know, the, the real life experience which the same faculty can do because he or she is teaching, you know, both kinds. He's teaching uh, the industry as well as teaching the students. So that's that's one big area, you know, where I feel uh, if universities do the industry uh, and the real industry orientation of the learning experience can go high. Second thing is we have also believed that, you know, there are, if you want to be industry oriented, look at what certain things which industry do very well. And we have never shied about, away by saying, this is something which industry does better than the university. Have you ever seen when an industry comes out with a new product? The kind of market research which takes place, the kind of user, uh, you know, usability research which takes place, and then how roadmaps are created for next three years, five years. And it is not just based on you know, people who are working in an organization who set out those roadmaps. They, work, they consult and actually get, get on board several professionals who do that job better. So you'd be surprised that, uh, you know, Bits Pilani, for several of our uh, programs, we've started commissioning market research. So we actually get, for example, if I have to look at my next five years roadmap for IT programs, let's say for WILP, I'll actually commission a research, you know, where people will go and talk to CLOs, and there are questionnaires, there are, uh, you know, there are interviews which are conducted. We talk, we go and talk to existing people who are working in the industry, looking at what, what problems they are facing and, and take all that. So this is almost like industry style market research. So if our student is a product who's going through you know, that kind of a program, are we really willing to go and match to that level? So industry has several lessons for us. You know, if we kind of adopt some of their own methods, the curriculum inputs that we could get. Apart from doing this episodically, I know uh, there will be meetings which will happen, industry will come and visit, there will be expert lectures, but can we also do concentrated uh, you know, investments into doing market research you know, uh, uh, to that level, which should go back into the input? There are a few other things which industry does, does well. Uh, for example, the sheer fact that industry has to meet, uh, meet their requirement at scale and uh, in a very, very volatile environment, they, invo they innovate on learning methodologies a lot. So things like bite-sized learning, things like anytime learning, you know, mixing asynchronous learning with learning, uh, with synchronous learning. There's a, there is so much that the industry has done which we can go observe and see. I'm not saying copy-paste it. The idea is not to copy-paste it, but see what's really working for them and see if there is a relevance, you know, within the university system, system itself. So industry can also be a teacher, while we are teachers, but industry could also be a teacher. We can learn from them and see how, uh, if, uh, if a company who has 200,000 people, you know, and if they are changing technology, how are they able to upskill people? Maybe there are lessons, you know, coming from their own system itself. And those lessons have to go back, you know, to the university and say, what is something which is implementable there? So I think uh, there is a lot of value there. Uh, 
Another thing which we have seen, uh, I think uh, uh, Dr. Sanjayati also mentioned about this, uh, you know, how medical schools have very successfully, you know, done this whole formula of, uh, you know, a hospital and a medical school model where the industry is literally working hand in hand. Now, while it may or may not be possible, you know, in all kind of uh, subjects or domains, but I think technology to some extent can make this possible. Uh, I'm not sure to what extent, you know, we are evaluating, you know, this whole, uh, uh, you know, 3G, 4G, 5G, as well as the simulations which are which are beginning to come in. I know of, uh, you know, companies where the factories have their digital twins. Now, can we look at getting those simulations? Can there be a factory inside, inside, a, inside a campus, which is not a real factory, which is a far more difficult thing to do, but simulations which could be really, you know, be inside. At Bits Pilani, we have made those attempts. We are already, uh, you know, through digital labs, through remote labs, uh, through cloud labs and through virtual labs are ensuring that a lot of industry scale problems students are getting exposed to and practice without really setting up that infrastructure. So there are possibilities, huge possibilities where uh, without really setting up a you know, hospital like a medical school, using technology itself we can bring in uh, you know, those uh, uh, experiences inside the classroom itself. Uh, <clears throat> last but not the least, uh, in terms of opportunities for the industry, you know, since I work with a lot of industry professionals, they keep on telling me that they want to contribute. Sometimes we think that uh, perhaps we don't get as much cooperation from them as we would need. But when you meet them, they say, no, no, we want to contribute. However, they have to be models which should make them easy for them to contribute. Not everyone, you know, can come and conduct an expert lecture. Remember that. Okay, that's not everyone's strength. Somebody could actually come and design an assignment for you. Somebody could actually come and evaluate along with you a viva or a project. So there are you know, people with different kind of capacities and capabilities in the industry. We should create more models for them which, which they are comfortable with. Everyone can't be a teacher, right? Which is a, which is a very different strength. But can we see that people who want to contribute back we create a diverse set of models so they can come back and, uh, and can actually participate. So many, many of these things, I think, uh, which BITS has done, okay, uh, on the in understanding the industry part is working for us. The second thing, I think, uh, uh, since you mentioned it, and I can't really leave without that, uh, again, it's, it's an old thing at BITS Pilani, but it's really worked for us. Uh, what we call as a practice school model. In fact, uh, the term internship is taboo within Bits Pilani. We don't use the term internship. Uh, there is a term that we use which, which we call as practice school, but it is not just nomenclature. It is not that it's the same thing in a new bottle. Uh, the whole idea of a practice school is that uh, industry needs to participate without you know, creating any biases in the, development, in the development of the student. So what we ensure is that almost seven and a half months, if it's a four-year program, almost for seven and a half months, the classroom of the student shift onto an industry location. First part of it happens after two years of education. The final part happens at the, at the final semester. And it is not an unguided. It's not like you know dropping somebody in a company and figuring out whether they learn or not. Our faculty and the mentors you know, from the companies get together and create that experience of practice school. Uh, the projects are negotiated. Projects which will be given come to the institute you know, from the different companies and we literally, the faculty negotiates with them and see you know, how the matching process could happen. So taking the you know, plain Jane internship to a very guided, mentored, industry oriented, imagine the faculty which is negotiating the project is also getting to know what the company is needing the, you know, the employees to do. So there's a lot of indirect impact you know, which happens through models like these. So thank you so much.